Welcome to this Saturday Travel and History Tip, and this is part two of a two-part series on riding the Mount Washington Cog Railway. If you haven't watched part one, I want to encourage you to do that because that got us to Marshfield Station, Bay Station, on the Cog, and up to Mount Washington. And now we're going to continue on as we're on the summit and explore a little bit. As soon as we got off the Cog, as you can see, we walked over to the edge. The clouds were already starting to pour in. The weather can change dramatically and quickly on top of Mount Washington. This is part of the state of New Hampshire state park systems. Mount Washington State Park has the Sherman Adams Visitor Center. As you pass through this doorway, you can go to the right and you can go into the Visitor Center. The actual museum in there was closed. I'm not sure why, if it's for renovations or because of COVID, but the Visitor Center, as far as buying gifts and all that, was opened. We got a state I don't know that I've mentioned this before. Most of the national parks and state parks and different fun places do have a stamp and you can have them stamp a piece of paper in memory of your visit there. I will show you about the National Park Passport book in another Saturday and Travel History Tip. And of course, we purchased a postcard and mailed it to us. There is a post office there in the visitor center. And as you can see, the clouds were just pouring in, yet we could see in other directions very clearly. A line forms very quickly to get to the Mount Washington Summit sign to stand and pose for a picture. We stood in the line and we got there, but I wanted to do something a little exciting. As you may have recalled in one of my previous Saturday Travel and History Tips about Mount Washington, I showed you these old pictures of when I was holding baby Paul on the top of Mount Washington. Well, I thought it would be apropos for Paul to be holding me this time. Of course, the people in line were wondering what on earth we were doing, and I had to explain to them that I certainly hope that 26 years later they will be able to return with maybe one of their children and do the same. This was just really a special treat for Paul and me to do and I think it's quite humorous. Hope you think it's funny too. I enjoy finding the survey markers and here is the one that is adjacent to the sign, the U.S. Department of Interior Geological Survey Marker. They're on the top of Mount Washington and the historic Tip Top House which I had mentioned in part one of this series. This is supposedly the oldest hostelry in the world. It is a historic site and unfortunately it was not opened but when we had been there in previous visits we had the opportunity to go inside. Many trails connect here and crisscross the summit. The Trinity Heights connector goes to the Gulf Side Trail, the Jewel Trail which we hiked part of the Jewel Trail several months back, to the Madison Hut and these huts are placed across the Appalachian Trail. They give cross-country hikers a place to sleep, a place to eat, and to load up on more granola bars and clothing if need be. We have been to a couple of these huts and they're really cool places to go to. And as you can see here, Mount Katahdin is 332.4 miles away and that represents the end of the Appalachian Trail. This sign says the Tuckerman Ravine Trail and the Hermit Lake Shelter. The shelter is like the huts and to Pinkham Notch, it's 4.1 miles. I have mentioned when we hiked part Part of the Tuckerman Ravine Trail from Pinkham Notch. The Crawford Path also crosses here. Along the Crawford Path is the Lakes of the Clouds and hopefully next summer we will be able to hike the Lakes of the Clouds. It is one of the most spectacular huts along the Appalachian Trail. The Mount Washington State Park Crawford Path sign reads, At this point, the geographical summit of Mount Washington, elevation 6,288 feet. The Crawford Path terminates. This path, the oldest mountain hiking trail in America was first laid out in 1819 and has been in continuous use since. At one time it was used as a bridle path and here are the views from Crawford Path. As we walked back behind part of the building systems where they have so many antennas because obviously Mount Washington being the highest point in the Northeast is a great place for antennas and we did a little hike just because we only had an hour up at the mountain summit. We could not do a whole lot but we did hike a little bit of the historic Crawford Path. Many of you know the highest wind ever observed by man was recorded here. From 1932 to 1937, the 
the Mount Washington Observatory was operated in the summit stage office, then occupying this site. In a great storm, April 12, 1934, the crew's instruments measured a wind velocity of 231 miles per hour. Steve got this shirt many, many years ago on one of our visits to Mount Washington and was excited to be able to wear this shirt again on this, our eighth visit to the summit of Mount Washington. And what was really crazy is that the summit stage building has now been torn down. And this is one of the buildings that was once chained to the ground. And it was kind of sad to see that it was no longer there. But one historic building that does remain is the Yankee Building. It was built in 1941 to house the transmitter for WMNE FM, the first FM station in northern New England. Broadcasts were made from 1941 to 1948. Later, it was leased by the U.S. Air Force for winter testing in connection with jet aircraft engine development. Now it houses two-way radio communications equipment for various federal, state, and private organizations. The numerous antennas seen on the roof are encased in fiberglass to protect them from the severe icing conditions encountered here on the summit. And here is a directional sign pointing south, and as you can see, it was getting awful cloudy. But out towards the Nelson Crag Trail, it was still blustery clouds and clear, as you can see the direction of the Cog Railway, and you can see the road in the distance where cars are traveling up the Mount Washington Auto Road to reach the summit. Well, it was time to get all aboard, and Paul beat us down to get ready to board our coach. And here are one of the classic trains chugging down the mountain. As we entered our coach, we were one of the first ones, and since our coach wasn't crowded, we skedaddled to the back so that we would have the freedom to move about. Here are a couple of great shots going down the mountain. frog painted on the side. He's awfully cute. And Jacob's Ladder, which we talked about on the way up, being one of the steepest sections of the Cog Railway at elevation 4,725 feet. And here is a picture of the Lake of the Clouds in the distance on the ridgeline. I look forward to the 1.5 mile hike to the Lake of the Clouds. So here with the summit here and you give me a lunch, all of a sudden you think your lunch is too bad because it stinks. Here's the downhill view of the halfway house, elevation 4,500 feet. And here is the area where the Cog Railway line split so that trains can pass each other. Look who is on the train coming up and waving at us. It's our brakeman. We have a new brakeman for our trip down. As the workers and the trains go back and forth and back and forth, they don't wait on you. They have to go pick up more guests to shuttle them back and forth up and down this historic mountain route. And here are where the steam engines pick up extra water so that they are able to complete the trip. And here's a great view of the cog. When we reached the base station, we went into the visitor center to buy patches as we like to collect patches from all the places we go. And we got this beautiful Cog Railway patch. And then we found out that they did not have Mount Washington Summit patches. They cannot sell the same items that they sell up top. So we were able to get a patch, but it was because of our friend David Clifford was able to take a ride up to the summit and purchase the patch for us. And we do want to thank our friend David Clifford, who works at the Mount Washington 
Cog Railway for getting us these guest passes to ride the Mount Washington Cog Railway. Thank you, David. As we left, we did stop by to go see David, and I want to encourage you to watch Nuggets 175, 176, and 177, and you will understand why David is so proud of his brand new maintenance facility and his brand new machinery that he was happy to show Paul and Steve and me that day. And if you recall, in one of the Nuggets, when David took us to his maintenance shed, he was showing us how they were in the process of building a new coach. We want to show you the progress. Here is what it looked like back in early June. And this is what they have already completed. It will be a beautiful new addition to the Mount Washington Cog Railway. American history. Learn it. Love it. Appreciate it. Don't let them steal our history. Treasure our American history. If you appreciate our content, tell others and repost on your social platforms. Watch our YouTube channel and subscribe. And hit the notification bell to be alerted when we post new nuggets and Saturday history and travel tips. There are over 250 videos ranging from 4 minutes to 15 minutes on all sorts of topics. Please check them out. Thank you. Thank you.